about Sunday School Leader today was a stay at home and do not wash my hair day. <laughs> Have you ex ever experienced the post Christmas blues? You know, sometimes this can occur as early as Christmas morning. You've, you've attended all the parties at work and at church. Uh, you've been listening to Christmas music for at least two months and all the presents are open and yet there's this there's this letdown feeling and that's probably because after you experience a bunch of highs and then that's over there's really no place to go but down especially when the reality of having to return to work as re as well as uh, you know those credit card bills are going to be coming in after spending all that money so we're going to be looking at a down time in Elijah's life this week as we continue in the unit that's called Elijah living outside the comfort zone. This is the fifth lesson in the unit and it's called serve even when discouraged from 1 Kings chapter 19. And the point of the lesson is this, don't let discouragement keep you from serving. Well in our previous lessons in this unit we've seen that Elijah experienced several miracles didn't he? He was miraculous, miraculously fed by ravens, he escaped into enemy territory uh, and there a widow took him in all the widows oil and flour never ran out and then last week we studied about the biggest miracle of all when this the showdown between him and the prophets of Baal happened and God showed up big time and now as we look at the first five verses of 1st Kings chapter 19 we see that Ahab the king goes back to Jezebel his wife who appears to have the actual power behind the throne and and he tells her about the slaughter of the Baal prophets at Mount Carmel. Then Jezebel sends this message to Elijah, May the gods punish me ever so severely if I don't make your life like one of them by this time tomorrow. Well, if you or I had received that message from the monarch of our country, we would probably do the same thing that Elijah did. He ran for his life. Now, Mount Carmel is up north, due west of the Sea of Galilee, and Beersheba is about 112 miles south of Mount Carmel, pretty much on the south border of Judea, due west of the south end of the Dead Sea. This is where Elijah left his servant, and then Elijah went on another day's journey into the wilderness. He found shade under a broom tree, and it was there that he prayed that, that he would just die. He had enough, and he, he didn't feel like he was making any difference in the world. Well, let's not get too hard on Elijah. Have you ever worked on a project, taught a Sunday school lesson, something like that, and, and you were pretty proud of it? You thought you did a great job, and, and many people complimented on you, uh, complimented what a good job you did. And then maybe that one person, just that one person, made somewhat of a critical remark. You know, sometimes just that one negative comment can burst the balloon of all the kudos that you've received. And, 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 with us, there's not even that threat of the loss of life involved. But in our story this week, Elijah was threatened with death within 24 hours. Sure, he was scared. Now, did he act hastily and, and run when he should have relied on God to protect him? Well, sure he did. Now, we can armchair quarterback that, all the wrong decisions of all the Bible characters, but we need to be careful not to neglect the log protruding from our own eye when we do that. Now, we know James 5.17 tells us that Elijah was a man just like us. And when we quote this verse, we usually mention uh, that when we're talking about the power of prayer, since the rest of this verse talks about how his prayers kept the rain from falling for three and a half years. But Elijah was human like us. He wasn't this Bible superhero that could do no wrong. He made mistakes. He ran when he should have prayed. He had his pity party, as we do so often. He was a man just like us. Now, in, in what I'll call professional ministry, we don't have the fear of death, usually, but there is that fear of losing, losing one's job. Now, here's just some statistics from the Barna Research Group. About 1,500, 1,500 pastors each month leave the ministry. Now, that's not changing from one church to another. That's leaving the ministry entirely. And sometimes that's their own decision. It could be due to burnout or pressure from their spouse or some other factors. Other times it's not. It's not their decision and not their fault. Maybe they preached on a subject uh, that the con congregation didn't want to hear. Uh, maybe the, the pastor felt God leading the church in, in one direction and the people disagreed. You know, that's a tricky spot that ministers find themselves in. 
right? They're, they're called to lead and they're called to shepherd people who have the power to fire them. At least in the Baptist church, that's how it works. Now, here's some other statistics. 70% say they have a lower self-image now than when they first started. 90% say that they are inadequately trained to cope with the ministry demands. 33% state that being in ministry is an outright hazard to their family. 50% said they would leave the ministry right now if they had another way of making a living. These are all sad statistics, but I think it's important uh, for, for church members to know that ministry isn't just sitting around, praying all day, singing kumbaya. Okay? Now, and I'll say all this as a reminder to you that I and your pastor and even Elijah experience those times of discouragement and even wanting to give up. Now, in the verses not in our lesson text, in verses 6 through 10, we see that God miraculously supplied Elijah's needs once more. He wasn't scolded for his lack of trust. No, he wasn't punished for running from Jezebel. None of that. He was provided food by an angel. And he was strengthened. And he, he traveled down to Mount Horeb. Now, we also know Mount Horeb as Mount Sinai. That's where Moses received the Ten Commandments. Now, just like a child who's in distress and wants to be in the comforting arms of their parents, Elijah, he wanted to be comforted by his heavenly Father. And even though the Lord spoke to him wherever he was, there had to be something comforting about being in the spot where God spoke to Moses. And the Lord asked him, why are you, what are you doing here, Elijah? And this is where he broke down and he had a little, little pity party. In his, in his perception, he was the only one left in Israel who loved the Lord because all the other Israelites, in his mind at least, had rejected God's covenant. Then we get down to verses 11 through 14 and God uh, told Elijah to go stand on the mountain and the Lord's going to pass by. Now, if you've been in church for a few years, you've you probably remember this part of the story, right? There came a wind so strong that it shattered some of the rocks. That's a pretty strong wind, right? Then there was this earthquake and then a fire. But what does the Bible say? It says that the Lord wasn't in any of those. Now, those are all pretty dramatic happenings, aren't they? Mighty movements of earth, wind, and fire. But then there was a gentle whisper or that still small voice. And the Lord was in that. And again, I have to admit, I'd love to witness a mighty movement of God or this unexplainable miracle. Now, can he work in ways like that that are spectacular? Certainly, he, he has and he does. But in my opinion, more often than not, he works in and through what we would consider the, the mundane, the quiet things of life, that still small voice. And if we're constantly looking for the grandiose, we're going to miss what God's doing right under our noses. Another take on this is that if we live, or if we fill our lives with a lot of noise, we're going to miss the gentle whisper of God. Now, what did Elijah do when he heard and he recognized that God was in the whisper? He covered his face with his mantle. Now, mantle was simply a cape worn to ward off the cold. Now, all through this story, we've seen God speaking to Elijah. In verse 9, it says this, And the word of the Lord came to him. Verse 11, The Lord said. In verse 15, The Lord said to him. But in verse 13, it doesn't say that. It says, Then a voice said to him. Now, I really don't know if that has any significance or not. I'm assuming that this is also God repeating the question to Elijah. And what's also interesting here is that Elijah replied to the same question exactly the same as he did before. As, as exactly the same way he did before that earth, wind, and fire and whisper experience. In, in the last of our verse, uh, verses this week, verses 15 through 18, Elijah gets an assignment. And, and it wasn't just busy work to keep his mind off his problems. It was actual prophet work. He was to go back the way he came back to the north, anoint Haziel king over Aram, which is also known as Syria, and then anoint Jehu king over Israel, and then anoint his successor, Elisha. And we're going to learn more about him next week. In the assignment, there was also a gentle rebuke. Elijah, you think you're the only one left? 
there will be 7,000 in Israel who will not worship Baal. All right, here's some takeaways from this lesson. First of all, seldom are things as bad off as we think. In fact, we tend to let our imagination run and imagine the worst possible situation. Uh, and we say those extreme words, nobody likes me, everyone is against me. Okay, let's, again, let's not pick on Elijah too much. We've all said those things. Also, we need less noise and busyness in our lives in order to hear what God is telling us. Now, personally, I've never heard audibly God speak to me. In fact, I'm very hesitant to say God told me to do such and such. Now, I'll say something like, I really believe God is telling me to do such and such. But how does God speak to us, if not audibly? Well, you know the answers, don't you? His word through prayer, through worship, sermons, music, other Christian circumstances. But let, let's please remember this and tell your classes. Every open door was not necessarily opened by God. Okay, So beware of taking advantage of every open door that comes before you and think that God's opening up all these circumstances. Also, I think it's important to talk to your class about depression. You know, much of depression is spiritual, but not all. While a person can't control all of it, I, I think they can control some of it. And I'm not talking about clinical depression, okay? You know, if someone has a compound fracture, I'm not going to recommend, uh, now go pray about that. No, I'm going to say go to the doctor right now. And so likewise, let's not discount, let's not ridicule depression or depressed people by trying to put a spiritual band-aid on them. You know, you've, you've heard the phrase, I'm too blessed to be depressed. Well, as we say in Arkansas, that's a bunch of hogwash. On the other end of the spectrum from the spiritual band-aid is the stern advice, just put a rubber band around your head and snap out of it. Okay, now, sometimes that's, a le that's legit advice, you know, get out of your pity party. But oftentimes it does more harm than good to say that. Depression can have its root in physical, psychological, or spiritual issues, or sometimes a combination. So let's not assume that it's always just one of those. So remember, Elijah was a man just like us. He got discouraged too. So let's not look down on those who suffer from depression. Pray with them. Be their friend. Encourage them to seek professional help if that's needed. Just like you would any other ailment. And have them continue to serve in whatever capacity they can. That's the thing. We can still serve even when they're discouraged. Even when we're depressed, still serve. You know, I've heard it said that... Um, sometimes some of the best cure for depression because depression is a lot of looking inward and you know self introspection and, and just imagining things some of the best cure for that is to get outside yourself to do things for other people to minister so encourage your folks to do that well thank you guys for watching don't forget to pray with your class and for your class I appreciate uh, like I said appreciate your watching and maybe next week I'll wash my hair <laughs> bye